This episode is sponsored by the Spring Forward Writers Retreat. If you're someone who has a book as your luxury item and you've been sitting on it for a while, I've got just the answer for you. If you need somebody to hold your hand or help you do it as a work session in person, the Spring Forward Writers Retreat is happening March 14th to 16th of 2025. It's happening in beautiful Kissimmee, Florida. So if you're interested in that, if that's something you want to do, you want to knock out your book at the beginning of 2025, let's go. Because when you come, you're coming with your book as is. Whether that's with the outline, maybe just a few ideas that you put on paper, maybe you're coming starting from scratch. By the end of the weekend, you will leave with a rough draft. You will leave with a manuscript completed. So that is the tangible item you're coming away with, okay? So if you're interested, go to tinyurl.com forward slash spring forward retreat. Good evening. Happy Wednesday, my winners and goal getters. Welcome back to another episode of the Getting the Win Show. I am your host, Melissa T, the procrastination bully. If this is your first time tuning into the show, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Now, today's episode, we're going to focus on two different time blocking strategies. You might roll your eyes when you hear the sound of that. It's like, oh, that's kind of boring. Yes, this is something that is unsexy, but I want to present you with two strategies that you may not have heard of before. And full transparency, I didn't make these up. These are not mine. I didn't come up with them. But they're they're a game changer, especially because they have to also do with your habits and behaviors, your behavior style. OK, and y'all know that's something I nerd out on. <laughs> All right. This is actually coming from the Hormozis, Alex and Layla Hormozzi. Shout out to them for this. But it's an incredible concept for me anyway. And I wanted to make sure to share it with you once I learned it. But they mentioned there are two different types of workers in the workspace and therefore two different types of schedules. They talk about a manager and a maker. So here's the difference between those two and what those particular scheduling styles would look like and which one is appropriate for you and what you can do going forward. So a manager, obviously, as the, the title implies, that's usually the boss. But the manager is someone who typically works in short bursts of time. They, they have a lot of meetings. They're, they're able to go from thing to thing very quickly. They're very task oriented. They're very, and in some cases, people oriented, but they're able to move and make decisions much more quickly. Okay. So that's, that's the manager work style. The maker work style is for the person that works a lot longer. These are your people that actually are dedicated to the actual execution of the tasks. So in entrepreneurship, these are your actual content creators, your video editors, your copywriters. These are the people that are actually going to do the work in long stretches of time. The manager is the one that typically would be assigning the work, right? In that, that sort of workplace environment. Or if you're someone who has those short bursts of attention, that's more your working style. There are some folks who need time, continuous time to just focus and do the work. Okay. So keep in mind those two, those two work styles. Now, if you've been following me for a minute, you've heard me discuss the flight assessment a lot. Uh, the extreme execution flight assessment that is through ET the hip hop preacher. And he talks about, he spins the disc assessment with the, the flight metaphor. So pilot, flight attendant, grounds crew, air traffic controller. So the manager style, that working style sounds a little more akin to your pilots and flight attendants, your people who are either really dominant or just very creative and they they move very fast they're, they're high energy they're not very patient <laughs> and they're not too big on structure so those kind of folks will have a tendency to 
with their colleagues jump in into the office and ask, hey, got a sec or whatever, like, hey, I got this that's coming up. Can you work on it for me kind of thing? They're the interrupters, right? For the folks that are the makers that are over here that prefer to work in long blocks of time. Like someone who's a maker just wants to do the work. They don't feel like talking. They're introverts typically. They want to just execute. Okay. Just tell them what's needed at the beginning of the day or at the beginning of the week and just let them work. Right. That's more of your grounds crew and your air traffic controllers. These are your people that prefer to just work. <laughs> Don't disturb them because what happens with your makers, if you're someone that's part of a team and you're, you have some that are managers, some that are makers, just be mindful of this. The person who is the maker has a very set type of focus. They don't move quickly. They don't make decisions quickly. They're very deliberate. They're very intentional. They're very methodical. And the moment you break their, their block of work with a 15 minute conversation, 10 minute conversation, a quick question, the moment you do that, it's going to take them a much longer time to refocus and get back into the flow of doing the work. If that's you, type that in the comments. I'm a maker. If you're a manager, type that in the comments. Like, I'm a manager. I'm someone that makes quick decisions. I'm a problem solver. I'm aggressive. I move quickly. Or I'm highly creative. I'm highly social. I love people. So I'm constantly talking to my team. You're likely a manager because you're likely the person that's in a lot of meetings and things like that. And here's one of the things that the Hormozis taught when they were teaching that concept and I think this is great. If, if you're someone who's a leader, you're an entrepreneur, and maybe you have a group of people that you're working with, or if you're a member of a team, maybe you're not the leader, but maybe this is something you can present to your leader. The way they recommend building out this schedule is to schedule meetings in such a way that not everyone is required to attend. Game changer. It sounds like a super simple concept, but what do we know about most work meetings? Most work meetings involve everybody, right? In a situation where you're fully aware of the work style of your teammates, whether you're the leader or not, that can determine who needs to be present for the meetings because a meeting can completely break a maker's workflow completely, especially if it was a meeting they didn't need to be at. They'll be upset <laughs> talking about you through the side of their mouth, right? So that's something to consider. And if you're the maker, feel free to be honest and put guilty in the chat, like <laughs> in the comments. If you're someone who has been in that situation where you were called away to a meeting that you really did not want or need, to be a part of. So if you're someone who's the leader and you are responsible for these meetings, just keep that in mind. And then if it's a situation where a maker is necessary for those meetings, pick a specific day of the week as a team. Pick a specific agreed upon day of the week where the makers know for sure, okay, this is a day where we have a meeting. I know I gotta be there. And they'll be mentally prepared. And then what they'll do is they'll set their work blocks either before or after that meeting time, whatever you guys agree on as a team. Okay. Now, if you're someone who's a maker, that now gives you the next truth that I have to share with you, which is be prepared in your schedule to have a day when you're, when you're doing both maker work and manager work. As the team agree upon that, like make it mutual. Or, you know, if it's client and you're, you're the service provider, agree upon that. Set your schedule up in that way. If you're someone who's a solopreneur or if you're someone who's like a coach consultant and you're dealing with clients and you meet in person or meet over Zoom, but you're someone who's a maker, set up your schedule in such a way where you pick one day out of the week, maybe two, depending on how frequently you have clients and meetings, where you're only setting up blocks for meetings 30 minutes at the most an hour but most meetings can be done in 30 to 45 
Like there's not usually a whole lot you need to talk about. Not in terms of providing a service. Most meetings can be taken care of in 30 to 45 minutes. If you choose to, if you're a coach and you choose to coach in one hour blocks, of course, that's your prerogative, especially if you choose the hourly model for the way you charge for your services. But if that's how you function, but you know that you're a maker, you're someone who is more methodical, you research things out, you're some, you're the person that's doing the executing, you're the content creator, you're doing the research for the content, you're doing the ideation for the content. If you know you do work in longer blocks, set up the rest of your week in those big schedule blocks, those big working blocks, two to three hours at a time two to three hours at a time. Or you can follow the Paolo Coelho model where he works in four hour blocks, focused, undisturbed, four hour blocks on one thing. No multitasking. Focused four hour blocks on one thing in each four hour block. He doesn't work four hours on one thing and then the next four hour block continue working on that thing. No, no, no. When that four hour block is over and the next one starts, he takes a break in between, usually to eat. That next four hour block, he's working on something else. Okay. And the hormones recommend something like that as well. In your big work blocks, whether you choose to do it as two hours, as three hours, or as four, by like make sure you're focusing on one thing. And then in the next block, something else. Knock stuff out that way. And then for the managers, the folks that move move very quickly, you guys are very mindful of your time anyway, especially if you're a pilot. You're mindful of your time anyway. But yeah, 15, 30, 45 minutes. Get those meetings done and be mindful of the people on your team who are makers that may not necessarily need to be present for those meetings. If they don't need to be, by all means, Give them their freedom to work in those big time blocks so they can execute on your behalf and get those things done that you want them to get done. And again, as a reminder for makers, pick out one or two days of the week, depending on how frequently you need to meet people, where you're doing only manager tasks, where you're just like, all right, I know th these two days are my meeting days. As an example, Mondays and Tuesdays, I know those are my meeting days, anywhere from 15 to 45 minute blocks, right? You know, you're going to be talking to people and make sure, know this, make sure you build in breaks, whether you're doing the manager style block or the maker style block, build in breaks in there. If you're a maker, maybe the only break you need is a meal break. Cool. But make sure you have it in there though. The last thing we want to do is work completely in a row, like in a slog, because more than likely what will end up happening is we'll start to feel the drag and want to procrastinate. And this is the thing we're preventing, right? I'm the procrastination bully. My job is to bully that. So the last thing you want to do is turn it into a slog where you're working for way too long and you become mentally exhausted. In a previous episode, I talked about decision fatigue. If you're working for too long like that, you will end up with decision fatigue. You start to get tired of what you're doing and you'll lose your desire to do it. So if you're a maker, just keep in mind, you have some folks on your team that are, that are managers. Your managers are going to need to disturb you in the process. So talk with your, 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 folks on your team that have that manager work style that like to work in shorter bursts and make clear your boundaries. Let them know like, Hey, I work in blocks. Like I need my time. I need my time. Okay. They'll understand. And then you guys reach a mutual agreement for when those specific meeting days are going to be whatever days of the week you guys agree on. And just know that Makers, don't be too mad at, at your managers for disturbing, disturbing your time. They're going to have to. There, there are going to be some meetings you're going to need to attend. So it's okay. You can, you can forgive them. And for the managers that are having to honor the makers on your team, the one common thing we always hear in any conversation, what, what do we tend to hear? You know, this meeting could have just been an email. 
right? <laughs> we always hear that. So to the managers, if you're someone, if that's your working style, make sure even if it's somebody that you pull as a who to do this for you, maybe you don't like having to type emails. Maybe you find that stuff boring. Find someone that can help you get that done. Or by all means, use what me and Jessica call a little chat chat, aka chat GPT. If you need a way to write your ideas down without actually writing them down. Leverage the time-saving properties of the machine. But make sure your stuff is written down that you know the maker is going to need to know and shoot them that email. They'll appreciate that. Your, the, your maker teammates will appreciate that because you're sending it to them in writing. So they have their time to be able to see it and review it and then execute accordingly. As opposed to you pulling them aside and asking them the question. Or pulling them into a meeting that they didn't necessarily need to be a part of and they get frustrated. That increases productivity, decreases frustration, decreases mental fatigue, decreases decision fatigue as well. And all expectations are set. Your boundaries are in place for both working styles. There's greater work harmony when you do it like that. The machine moves along better oiled than before if you apply these things. I thought that was a game changer. I wanted to make sure to come on and share these concepts with you in case you can take them and run with them. Okay, if this applies, by all means, work it. <laughs> Push forward, move the needle that much faster towards your luxury item. This one was a bit of a brief one. And I will put the link down in the show notes for the Alex Hermosi presentation. Now, Alex waxed deep on this. That video, his video was a lot longer. So if you're somebody that is very, very frugal with your time, just be aware this is something that's closer to an hour. If you're going to watch his video, it's a little bit closer to an hour. It's a longer video, but you're going to get the full details if you want to learn more about it. And I want to make sure to share that with you. Okay. This one was a much briefer episode, but I wanted to present that information to you so you can take that, run with it, move faster, have a better workspace, have a better team dynamic if you're an entrepreneur and you're working with a team remotely, or be more effective at planning out your own schedule. Maybe you've been experimenting with different scheduling types. Maybe you tried the, the bulleted list and it's not really working for you. Maybe you tried the Stephen Covey quadrant with the priorities and maybe that's not working for you try this one try this approach and see if it'll work for you and as always make sure you have an accountability partner somebody in your life that you can bounce these ideas off of and can hold you accountable to what you're working on that way you can see whether or not your approaches are effective because again what gets measured gets improved upon what gets measured gets results. What gets tracked gets results. Okay. If you have any questions, as always, follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and threads at Getting the Wind Show and drop me your questions in a DM. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to comment there. Leave a comment if you have a question, drop it in the comments. Let me know your biggest aha moment from this one. And I would love to chop it up with you in the comments and subscribe there. Click the bell icon so you never miss a single episode, never miss a single ounce of value. All right. In the meantime, have a great and productive rest of your Wednesday and a great and productive rest of your week. Peace.